dealing with similarity transformations here. All right, so our first term, a dilation. Okay, now a dilation in math kind of has the same meaning as what you would think in, in real life, but we're going to put a scale factor to it. Um, so first of all, what do you think of when you hear the word dilation? For me, I think of eyes. Oh, boy, that was scary. Sorry about that one. Okay, but yeah, your eyes can dilate, right? Your pupils get bigger or they could actually get smaller um, depending on what happens or sometimes when you go to the eye doctor. Um, I haven't been there forever. I got pretty good eyes. I'm lucky. Uh, so they do something that makes your eyes dilate. And a dilation of math means a transformation that enlarges or reduces, just like your eyes, the original figure proportionally. So here's the key thing. It does it proportionally. So that means our figures are going to be similar after they are dilated. So let's take a look here. So I have a figure, a red triangle, and it is getting enlarged into the green triangle. And it's the sides are actually going to be proportional. This is a similarity transformation. Okay, So all of our dilations um, end up having sides that are proportional. They're also dilated off a center point, a fixed point where the object dilates. So in this case, uh, we have the origin. This is where the center of dilation is. Okay, And then each point just gets extended um, further from that center of dilation as I have these blue dashed lines drawn in. You can take a look there. And lastly, we're going to find a scale factor. We actually use the letter K for scale factor to describe the extent of the dilation. Right? So if it enlarges, we'll figure out what our scale factor looks like. If it uh, reduces, we'll figure out what it looks like. So for the scale factor, so scale factor, we want to think of how many times bigger. How many times bigger? Well, if it enlarges, that means, well, let's just think about this. If it was one time bigger, it would be the exact same image, right? If it was one time bigger, it would be the exact same. It wouldn't grow at all, right? Anything times one is just itself. So for a dilation to enlarge, it has to have a scale factor greater than one. It has to have a scale factor greater than one, right? It could be like two times bigger, two and a half times bigger. Um, things like that. And we're going to keep it in fraction form and you'll see that. Well, a reduction, if I'm going to say how many times bigger, right, it has to be less than one. And we couldn't have a negative um, scale factor. So it has to be between zero and one for it to be a reduction. Right? I could say like half as big. And the new shape is two to three. Two thirds as big. Um, and we'll take a look at how we find that scale factor. It's, it's nothing too difficult. So first thing, determine whether the dilation from figure A to figure B is an enlargement or a reduction. That's pretty, that's pretty easy. So I'm looking at figure A to B. So A is my original, and I go to B, it looks like from A to B, it's enlarging, right? A was smaller, B becomes big, so we say it's an enlargement. Then find the scale factor of the dilation. All you got to do is pick two sides that correspond. So, for example, if I look at the, the bottom, uh, or let's look at the top side of A right here, right here. That distance is two units, right? It's just one, two. So, that's two units. Well, the distance of B that corresponds to the top side of the rectangle is one, two, three, four, five, six. Six units. So, here's how you do the scale factor. To find K, always put the new image over the old image. So for example, in this case, the sides that correspond, the new image has a length of six, the old image has a length of two, which is a scale factor of three. And that should make sense, because it's an enlargement, so it has to be greater than one, which it is, it's three times bigger, right? So my shape, my figure B is three times bigger than figure A. That's what that scale factor tells us. Okay, so for the scale factor, always put the new over the old. The new image over the old image, the original image. Well, let's get a story problem without a picture here. So a photocopy of a receipt is 1.5 inches wide and 4 inches long. By what percent, that's the first thing we're doing, should the receipt be enlarged so that its image is 2 times the original. And then what will the dimensions be of the enlarged image? 
So the original image, here's the dimensions of the original. We got a 1.5 by 4 inch uh, receipt. Okay, we want to enlarge it two times as big. Two times as big. Well, think about percentages. 100% would be the whole image, the whole original image. So 100% of the image is the original. Well, if I want it two times as big, what percent would we do? Well, let's just multiply that by two. There you go. So we want 200% of the original image. Nothing too difficult. What will the dimensions be of the enlarged image? Well, same thing. We want it two times as big, so just take 1.5 times 2 and 4 times 2 to find the new dimensions. So 1.5 times 2, that gives us 3, and 4 times 2 gives us 8. So there's our new in image. 8 inches by, or 3 inches by 8 inches. Done. So there's our new dimensions. We enlarged our original by 200% because it's two times as big. Okay, just think of 100% being the whole original image. Okay, lastly, uh, we're gonna be given two images here, an original and the new image, and we're gonna graph both uh, and then verify that it's a similarity. Okay, so let's talk through this. Let's just get a graph first. So the original, negative six, negative three. I also got six, negative three and then negative six, six. So there's my first, whoa, I didn't, didn't put that one down to three, whoops. There we go, so six, three, negative three, and up there. So this one's at negative six, six, this one's at negative six, negative three, and this one's at six, negative three. Or, yep, six, negative three. Yep, and it's image, We'll put in red here. So negative two, negative one, two, negative one, and negative two, two. We'll verify that it's a tr similarity transformation. Well, think about this. To verify that it's similar, uh, sides have to be proportional, right? So I gotta find all the side lengths and see if they're proportional, see if their ratios match up. Well, let's do the easy ones first. Right, if I have a vertical or a horizontal line, I can just count. So let's look at my vertical line right here. I'm up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So a distance of nine, actually between my two y values, right? Six and negative three is nine, nine units. Well, between negative six and six is 12 units, and I could count that off as well. Well, let's look at my red shape. The vertical line is one, two, three. Going horizontally is one, two, three, four. So let's check and see if those match out. So I always put the new image. So if I look at the vertical lines, three over, well, that corresponds with the other vertical on the original, which is nine, distance of nine. And let's see if that equals the horizontals. So the new image over the original. So do those match up so far? You bet, right? They're, they both simplify to one third. Divide the first one by three, divide the second one by four. So, so far one third equals one third. Well, I could find what those are. Okay, I could use the Pythagorean theorem for both those because it's a right triangle. Or I could use the distance formula uh, between the two points. That's two ways. Or if I think back a couple sections, don't I have a similarity statement for triangles, right? I could use side, angle, side, similarity. Well, what do I know? Right angle, right angle, in between the two sides that are proportional. So there we go. This is actually similar by side, angle, side. And I proved it with my proportional statement, and I don't actually have to find that third distance to show that, that it's proportional. I already know it by the angles. Okay, so use some of that information we've already learned to save yourself some time. Now I don't actually have to find that, that third side, the hypotenuse. Okay, nothing too much. A couple of them will take you a little bit of time. 
Um, but just work through it. Make sure you show all your work.